Welcome to Northwest Profiles, a look at people, places, and events of interest in the Inland Northwest. Kids love them. Adults are obsessed with them. And the world couldn't live without them. The bicycle, a symbol of personal freedom, expression, and fun. Bicycle, bicycle, bicycle. I want to ride my bicycle, bicycle, bicycle. I want to ride my bicycle. I want to ride my bike. I want to ride my bicycle. I want to ride it where I like. The evolution of the bicycle came to an abrupt halt in the early 1900s when the automobile rolled onto the scene. Why pedal when you could ride? Since the days of the Stolle Brothers safety cycle of the 1890s, the bicycle's design has changed very little. In the 1930s, a rebel rose among the racing elite. His name was Charles Moshe, and his design was the Velocar recumbent bicycle. This aerodynamic recumbent not only beat the upright bicycle in race after race, but smashed a 20-year-old speed record at over 45 miles an hour. Moshe's glory was short-lived, though, when the question arose if his velocar could be classified as a bicycle. The ruling party of that day was Union Cyclist International, and after much debate, the recumbent, because of its low aerodynamic design and because the rider was able to push off the seat for extra power, was disqualified and its speed records erased. So that stopped development of recumbent bicycles, not only for racing, but for the average person on the street as well. Inventor, designer, and entrepreneur Ernest Buckler of Spokane, Washington, is one of several recumbent makers throughout the nation that believe if Charles Moshe's bicycle was not disqualified, we might all be riding recumbents today. I've always liked machinery, and I've always been interested in design. Ernie is part of a new breed of designers dedicated to finding a way of introducing the safety and comfort of the recumbent bicycle into modern society, finding that niche that will take his vintage design to new heights, eliminating the disadvantages of an upright. I got, to, I got tired of hurting. I got to the point where I could ride a couple of, uh, I rode a couple centuries, 100-mile uh, rides, but the day after I didn't want to sit down, my neck hurt, my shoulders hurt, my arms hurt. And uh, one day I saw an ad for an early recumbent. Uh, I bought a frame set and put it together, and that started my love affair with recumbents. Ernie's unique patent design, called SR91 Advanta Semi-Recumbent, is based on a small, impractical Italian recumbent called the Polo Bike. Uh, the early kit was very crude. The, it broke half a dozen places. Every time it broke, I fixed it. Before the recumbent bicycle consumed his time and resources, Ernie was and always will be an inventor. It's a funny state of mind. In fact, the recumbent was far from his first vision. Musical instruments, strange uh, dwellings, unusual uh, architectural themes, uh, furniture, toys. Uh, someday we'll have to get those files out. I haven't looked at them for quite a while. Ernie views everybody as an inventor one way or another. The key is acquiring the skills to take an idea forward to the next level. In the early days, I was limited by skills. I would take these ideas to manufacturers and, and uh, investors, and uh, the criticism on their part was always, hey, kid, ideas are a dime a dozen. Oh, okay, what do I need? Well, you need to have some drawings and some proposals. So it was back to school for me. College had never been relevant until I got that message that I needed to, to take an idea to the point where it could be manufactured. A regular bicycle is a, is a, a torture device. The foremost advantage to the recumbent bicycle is its comfort, especially over long distances. Recumbents are considered more of a touring bicycle. A lot more people should be riding recumbent bicycles. They've got a, a great riding position, a comfortable seat, 
you're watching the scenery go by instead of uh, hunched over with your chest cavity closed up. It's overweight people who are trying to become fit are attracted to recumbents in general. It gets them out of the house, they can ride without hurting. A recumbent lets them, uh, of whatever brand, whatever style, lets them uh, get out there and, and uh, exercise the cardiovascular system. Even though the first recumbent patent was issued 100 years ago, recumbents today are still viewed as a strange sight and looked upon as an awkward form of transportation. Ernie's semi-recumbent design allows a rider a certain amount of familiarity to its look and feel. I wanted to keep the, uh, the number of unique parts to a minimum. So basically what I've got is the, the seat is different, the frame is different, and there's a steering tiller that's different. Other than that, everything is the same. It's great. The most notable disadvantage of a recumbent is that you can't stand up and use your legs in the same way as an upright. This is offset by the fact that a person who uses three times their weight on an upright can use five times their weight on a recumbent, a fact that Charles Moshe realized in the 1930s and the reason the world record on a recumbent is now over 65 miles an hour. Ernie's SR recumbent has been clocked at 30 miles an hour, plenty fast for most people. Though the popularity of recumbents has steadily grown in recent years, they haven't exactly exploded onto the scene. The cost of being first in a huge market dominated by upright bicycles has taken its toll. After 10 years of research and thousands of dollars, Ernie, like many other recumbent bike designers, still find themselves pedaling uphill. Bicycle shop owners are, are very conservative souls for the most part. They've seen others fail by taking risks, so they're not willing to try to establish a new pattern. Leading the way in the recumbent's rising popularity is a group of bicycle-loving scientists dedicated to promoting the recumbent and other odd human power machines. The International Human Powered Vehicle Association has done a great job in the last, over the last 20 years developing market awareness. They, they were a group of aeronautical engineers from Southern California that got tired of the restrictions uh, imposed by the United States Cycling Federation that said a bicycle has to look like a conventional bike. If Ernie's design is to find a home among consumers, it'll be because of the next generation. He believes children are the future for the recumbent's continued success. I heard from the patent office that they're gonna grant my second patent, which covers the frame design that is specifically aimed at the child's market. And I, I say child's market, we're, we're talking up to, to 14 years old here, uh, up to f f five, six, and then we're getting into the bikes that are made for adults. The 10 year struggle from custom prototype to mass market production has evolved into an ongoing education. I'm committed to making this bicycle project happen one way or another to manufacturing them myself on a custom basis until it becomes large enough to sell, become attractive to a, a major manufacturer, hopefully to find an investor or two here. The real success of the recumbent bicycle is dependent upon the commitment in the hearts and minds of dreamers like Ernest Buckler. To be an inventor and to have the courage to realize it's not a job, but an addiction that is likely to last a lifetime. Oh, I can't give up being an inventor. <laughs> I wish I could, I've tried to kick it. This project is supposed to support, intended right from the beginning to support other ventures. But they're a little riskier, <laughs> if you can believe that. They're riskier than a recumbent bike. If you have a topic for Northwest Profiles, send it to KSPS TV, 3911 South Regal, Spokane, Washington, 99223. Northwest Profiles is a presentation of KSPS Public Television.